Welcome to the Fabulous 50s and Beyond. I'm Jim Pollard, your co-host with my co-host, Janetta Pollard. Since our program is called the Fabulous 50s and Beyond, we're going to be talking about the 50s and beyond today. So you stay tuned. Our guest is Beth Bobo, and we're going to be talking about the Kentucky Association for Gerontology. We'll be right back. And he'd say, go with what you got. Start from where you are. Give it your best shot. Keep reaching for that star. Get in the race. Keep your own pace. Keep moving and never stop. Just go. Go. Hey, go with what you got. Welcome back. Our guest today is Beth Bobo. Beth, glad to have you on our show today because we're going to talk about an organization that I didn't know exists but probably should have known that it was <laughs> out there somewhere, uh, the Kentucky Association for Gerontology. I, I think that as we open up, kind of give us a brief synopsis of, um, you were, we were talking about earlier about when it started, restarted, okay. and some of the things that it does. Okay. Um, originally, it started in 1969 at the University of Kentucky. Um, and they ran through the late 70s and then kind of took a break. And it was reorganized in 1987 from, uh, with a partnership with Sandra Brown uh, Center on Aging at UK and Western Kentucky University. So we've been active for 25 years and our, part of our mission is to help advocate for the needs of the older population in Kentucky. Um, so we're just a statewide network of professionals who have an interest in gerontology, which is the study of the older population. Um, and we network, try to advance uh, the needs of the older population. Are there local chapters? Um, actually, it's a statewide organization. Um, we do break it down into six areas of Kentucky. Um, but we meet quarterly, um, and one of our main goals is to provide a yearly conference. And when we're not planning a conference, then we are working with our state legislators, and we encourage seniors and providers to work with their local officials and educate them on the needs of the popul older population. Well, we, uh, we believe that we've got a pretty active, would you call it, Council on Aging yes, in uh, Western Kentucky. And uh, Vicki Williams does a great job mm -hmm. uh, for us here. So we, we, she keeps me aware of kind of what's happening so I can right. let the public know what's happening out there. And we have such a variety of things. We have the senior games. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have senior games? We do. Um, I'm from the Owensboro area, and we, uh, we've we had senior games for about nine years well, now. That's, that's really fun. You know that it we is. have had our 27th year this year. That's great. That yeah, is great. Um, I'm fortunate enough to MC most of the senior oh, good. games, yeah. and uh, she goes and wins the medals, and I do the talking. Oh. <laughs> well, hey, that's good. A team effort. <laughs> right. But uh, we have that, and and we and we have a lot of I think a lot of good senior programs here, transportation, uh, and a lot of our uh, senior centers. They're very active, and that's what I like to see. Yes, that's because good. people do take advantage of them, and they're there to be taken advantage of, and that's one of the things that we try to try to let the people know. Mm -hmm. Well now, um, how do you join the organization, or can anybody join the organization? Anybody who has an interest in gerontology is more than welcome to join our organization. Um, it's open to professionals uh, of any field, of, um, nurses, social workers, um, service providers who provide services to seniors, um, students who are in college who are going into the field of gerontology. Um, and we do have a membership fee, a yearly membership fee of $40 for people, um, for professionals. But if you're a retiree or a student, then that uh, membership is only $20 a year. So it's a, it is an open organization for, it is. for anyone that's really interested. And I know we do have a lot of people who are interested in, in that work because today, one of the biggest things that we try to address around here is, of course, senior fraud. Yes, that is very important. Um, and the better we can educate the seniors, the more safe they will be in not falling prey to all types of fraud that is out there. I mean, and I don't, they, I don't, go ahead. They just, you know, they're so vulnerable. They are. Because we, 
at we grew up, you trust everybody. Exactly, and a lot yeah. of them live on their own, and maybe they don't have any family nearby or any family. Right. And so if Mr. Nice Guy calls them and sweet talk, it's hard He's, not to right. to fall prey if you know if you're lonely. We we just uh, we've had several programs on on senior fraud because because of that, and uh, I consider myself fairly computer knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. But I don't know anywhere near. But so many of these people don't know anything, and they get ripped off on the on the computer. I, I mean, I almost got ripped off once because I looked at something, and finally I said, "No, I'm going to talk to an attorney about that before I do that." Yeah. And I sure am glad I did talk to the attorney right. because it was, it was a fraud. It was a yeah. scam, is what it was. And a good thing to remember: if it sounds too good to be true, it probably it's, yes. Yes. it's right. not something you want to, you know, partake right. in. They rip them off for. Uh, you know, house repairs and all that kind of it thing. It is and sad, yes. Of course, the big thing now is uh, your your grandson is in trouble in England. Exactly. They're and bad uh, about calling and bad. saying they well, need money for bail or something. And but you would think that they would know where somebody in the family was that could, they could ask. You would think, but like, they prey on those who maybe have a little bit of dementia, you know, That's and true. just, uh, I and mean, they might just be excited to hear from their family, you know. Well, what does uh, the Kentucky Association of Gerontology, what are some of the things that they are involved in right now? Right now, our main goal is planning our conference that's coming up in April, um, but also um, a big part of it is us networking with different organizations to advocate on behalf of the older population. Um, like I said, we work with ARP and the Kentucky Association of uh, Area Agencies on Aging with Vicki Williams. There's 15 in the state and with the Department of Aging and Independent Living. And we try to get all of our stuff together and we, um, we send letters, we'll send groups to Frankfurt to educate our legislators about, you know, the needs of seniors. Because right now, I don't know if you all know, but there's 19,000 people in the state of Kentucky that are on a waiting list for services that we get through the Department for Aging and Independent Living. And that's only wow. going to get worse because the aging population is growing. Oh, yes. You know, and unfortunately, um, the budget's not growing with that population, and actually, we're, we're we've been told to experience we will experience cuts next year, mm. which is just heartbreaking to think about. Yeah, what does what does that program actually do for people that has the nineteen thousand waiting list? Okay, um, we do a variety of things, and all these are through your area agency on aging, and there's fifteen of them in the state. Um, it's like homemaker, home delivered meals, meals on wheels, that's what a lot of people know right. it by. Um, congregate meals or the meals at the senior centers, um, homemaking, personal care, um, and all transportation. And too, transportation, I would yes, and that's a much needed service. Yes. Um, and all of these services are, they enable the person to stay at home, which everybody wants to stay at home. They yes. don't want to go into a nursing home. Um, you know, they want to stay in their home as long as they can. So well, I think that's one of, the, uh, one of the big fallacies of our system is that we don't provide funds for the person who can stay at home. Right, it's much cheaper. With cheap. limited it is. care. It's, it's always it's, it's cheaper much to cheaper. keep them at home. Right. And, and I would love to see that addressed. Right. I know that a lot of people are trying to address it, but they it are. just don't seem like it's getting very right. far right now. Because um, the latest figures I had heard, it cost about $67,000 a year to maintain a person in a nursing home versus maybe eight or 10000 yeah. providing these 60, services. 60000 <laughs> Yes. Wow. Um, and you know, and they don't want even want to be there, so exactly. you know what I'm saying. Right. They would much rather be at home right. and maintaining in their home with these services. Let me ask you about your congregate, congregate meals. Are they only in the senior centers? Um, well, I can only speak for my area okay. in Owensboro. Uh, yes, um, there are regulations that if it's if you're serving a congregate meal, it must be in the senior center. We we can't offer takeout. See, know. the reason I ask that, I pastored in South Florida for several years, mm -hmm. and our Meals on Wheels had a had a program where we provided the kitchen. Mm -hmm. 
uh, place for the people to come so that the people from the neighborhood could walk into our kitchen at our church mm -hmm. and the Meals on Wheels would provide the meals. Mm -hmm. So they would come in and we actually provided what they call the dinner. Yeah. And they'd come in the afternoon and play cards or checkers or something like that right. in, in the room and then have their dinner and, and go back home. Mm -hmm. uh, it worked out pretty good. Right, you know, right. That, uh, and, and part of the ideal behind congregate meals is the socialization. You know, right. that's so important. Right to folks who may live alone, you know, they may not see anybody else unless they go to the senior center and hang out with their friends and play cards or, you know. I but used, you, I used, you hear so much of how much, how much it means to people to have someone that they're close to and that they can talk to. Right. They say they live longer and, exactly. and do better That's and everything. Right. Exactly. I used to close all of my services by having them hold hands across the aisles and sing a song. And then I said, you've got to hug 10 people before you go because that might be the only hugs they You're get that right. week. You're right. That was an excellent way to end a service, yeah. yes. And, uh, of course, our older ladies loved it, Oh, you know. sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't get hugged. They don't. Much. And that is so important to any human being Just is to touch. touch. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm excited about this and excited about the conference. If you want to, we can start talking about the conference. We'll okay. sort of get into it more in the, in the latter half. Uh, the dates are April the 22nd through April the 24th. It's going to be at Lake Bartlett State Park. Mm -hmm. It's a now, beautiful park. It is a beautiful park, but how do we get there with our bridge out? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, I'd say Google it, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, it is at the state park, and this year we, uh, normally we have not done this in the past, but we uh, partnered with the Department for Aging and Independent Living um, because they're going to require their ombudsman, or uh, who are people who go into nursing homes to investigate complaints, they're going to require their ombudsman and their benefits counselors who work under the SHIP program, the state health insurance program, they're requiring them to come to this conference. So with that partnership, they were able to get a reduced rate on the lodging and the meals. So with that and the uh, conference fee, we feel like it's a really good deal for people to attend. Um, it's, we were able to have a lower conference fee with that mm -hmm. partnership. Mm -hmm. So we're real excited about that. Uh, it's interesting, I went to one of the, one of the conferences one time and, and you know, I filled all that old paperwork and, Next thing I know, I got I got uh, continuing education credits in no. the mail. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and with this conference, we do offer continuing education credits for nurses and social workers, and some other health-related fields. Um, so um, that's good to get those out of the way. Um, We're talking about students. I there, I guess there are more students going into the field of gerontology and everything. I hope so, but there's probably still not enough. Really? I mean, uh, yes. Well, it's, it's going to be a big field. I mean, it is a big field now. It is. And it can do nothing but grow. Right, right. And, and so uh, the, the field of nursing, the field of gerontology, exactly. any, any of that type of medicine, yeah. it's got to grow and we need more people. Well, right. some of them can actually get uh, credit for coming to this right the nurses yes um, I think they have to keep up their licensure so they have to learn so many it's things part of their yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and we are offering a pre-conference intensive on Sunday afternoon on ethics um, and I, what I understand nurses and social workers are required to have oh, this component to those yes so well we're, we're half through okay you stay tuned and we'll be right back because we're going to talk a lot about this conference and some of the things that are going on and you may want to attend it, since it is in Western Kentucky. You stay tuned, we'll be right back. My husband, Hank, he taught me to live like there's no tomorrow, and we did it all. European vacations, expensive cars, the best restaurants. Life was great till he died. Now there are no tomorrows for Hank, but they're all I've got. Because we never saved a dime.
Welcome back. As we said in the first half, we're talking about something that concerns all of us who are in the over 50 group. And since this is the fabulous 50s and beyond, this is an excellent program for us as we're talking about the Kentucky Association for Gerontology. We're going to spend a lot of this time in this half talking about the uh, conference that they have coming up, some of the things. And I know there are a lot of you out there that don't attend conferences. Some of you do. But this is, uh, we'll see what's happening in this field because there are a lot of things that are happening that we may not know about. And this, this conference will deal with health and wellness, uh, some of the SHIPS, uh, benefit counseling, uh, elder abuse, which is a big topic. Mm -hmm. And elder abuse is something that, that I think we need to be continually addressing. It's uh, elder abuse in the homes, it's elder abuse in the nursing homes, it's elder abuse in the hospitals, and it's something that we really need to be, really need to be addressing and looking at and then legislation and advocacy. Well, I'll tell you that at one time, I was a non-paid lobbyist for nonprofits, and they did not like to see me come to the Capitol. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were talking the other day about some of the things that we did, and uh, I would walk into a city council meeting or a county court meeting, and they'd say, what is he here for <laughs> now? <laughs> but that's the way you get your word out. That's you right, know? that's right. And, um, and I was glad to be able to do it. So we need, and, and, and individuals don't realize that they can be a real advocate. Exactly. You don't have to have a title by your name to be that's an advocate. That's right. You just need to show, show up, up and speak. And, and be there. So that, right. that's really important. And, uh, and we need a lot more of that. Yes, we do. And we're going to need a whole lot more with the seniors because exactly. it's going to get rougher and rougher. It is. And it the is money's important. going to get tighter and tighter. Until our economy gets better, we've got, a, we've got a rough road to go. Yes, we do. All right, let's talk about this conference. As we said, it's April 22nd through 24th mm -hmm. at Lake Barkley State Park. Beautiful park. It is beautiful. But I'm interested. Uh, you talk about your sponsors. I mean, I think the sponsors need to be, need, okay. we need to know who they are. Um, and we need to talk about them and, uh, uh, because they're important okay. to make a conference be successful. Right. Um, our Platinum sponsors this year is the Penny Rawl Area Development District and uh, Jill Collins works at that AAA and she's the conference chair this year so she's done a lot of work on this conference. ARP, um, who have really been good to work with, um, not only do they have people on the board, the CAG board, but they also print the brochures for okay, us. Okay, let's, 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 let's talk about this ARP organization because a lot of people don't know what acronyms are. Right. <laughs> well, I know this is the American Association of Retired Persons. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so that's who that is. Um, also, um, our, another platinum sponsor is the Department for Aging and Independent Living. That, and the acronym for that is DALE. Now, is that a, state or, a statewide organization? It is. Not it, a regional? Not a regional. They're the ones who get the money from the federal government and then divvy it okay. out to the area agencies on aging. Um, our gold sponsor is the Purchase Area Development District. Um, our silver sponsors are the Green River Area Development District, Active Day, which is an adult daycare, uh, Commonwealth of Kentucky Protection and Advocacy, uh, and the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at the University of Kentucky. So we're really proud of our sponsors and this program could not be what it is without Most of our them sponsors. Can't be, you know, exactly. You, you, you have to have the sponsorship and right. the people to help uh, with the money to put them on. Right. Um, I was going to say something about one of these sponsorships and I, I, I forgot what it was. But sponsorship is, is so important uh, mm -hmm. that, that things are going. I know we put on a good mental health conference here oh, good. and our sponsors are, are real active. In. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about some of the things that they're going to do. Okay. I notice you've got something here, honey, you wanted to talk about that. Well, let's see what it is. Um, I think, it, what is MIPA, uh, right? MIPA, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not even. Um, well, I'll tell you what MIPA is. Um, MIPA is an acronym for the uh, Medicare Improvement for Patient and Providers Act of 2008. Um, and what we do with the MIPA is um, we receive money from Dale, who receives it from the federal government, and we go out and we do outreach for those who are low income, um, and we offer them help into um, receiving a subsidy 
for their Medicare Part D, which is the prescription side of Medicare. So, you know, if you have an income low enough, you might be eligible for a subsidy to help pay for your Medicare Part D. Oh, so that's what that, so there yeah. is, there is a, a, like a, a safety net there then. Yes, and that's what that's for. Um, and also, in some instances, it could also help people with extra help to um, with Medicare savings programs or plans. And under that, they might receive help with some, maybe their Part A, Part B, just depending on the individual and yeah. their circumstances. But um, um, okay, and, and, we, and SHIPA, of course, you know, I have never fully understand what. SHIP is. Right. SHIP stands for the State Health Insurance Program, and they call it SHIP for short. Um, basically, um, we recruit volunteer benefits counselors. Say you came to our office or we came to see you and you needed help with your prescriptions, paying for your prescriptions if you didn't have a supplement of that type, we, would, we could go out and research the best deal for you to help you pay for your prescriptions. Um, and also it help the benefits counselors under SHIP can also help people read their Medicare summaries, you know, that you receive in the mail. Oh yeah, yes. yeah. They're, they're you, need, you need somebody. You need somebody <laughs> exactly. Um, and then during the enrollment, um, when you have to pick your Medicare Part D, they can um, look at your medicines and give you the top three um, policies that might be best to fit you and let you determine, you know, which, which policy is want. best, you know, we don't we don't make that determination for you, but we do research it and give you at least the three top three. Well, all of this is is hard to understand. It I is. Mean, they don't write it, you know, just in plain English. Exactly. And uh, and really that's probably one of our best kept secrets, you know, <laughs> and, and not to keep it a secret, but you know, if you don't need the service you don't know about the service right. is what I found uh, you know working with the older population just like any services like homemaker or home delivery meals you don't think about those services until you need, need them. them right right, right. Oh, I went through these looking at these prescriptions the last six weeks man I mean yeah. you know you get this one you get this one you get this one you get this one for four dollars you get this one for a hundred dollars you know right, right. And, uh, it's a it's a pain. It to, is. To go through. And also a good resource for, uh, because unfortunately a lot of our seniors take multiple medications, you know, and I encourage them to talk to their pharmacist, you know, to make sure that there's no interactions with the medications they're taking. That's yeah, so I think important. that's very important. It very is. important that it is. I also noticed that, uh, that part of it, because we talked about the, the senior abuse, but here's one called mental health and substance abuse. Or do we have substance abuse problems in the elderly? We do. And you know, as the baby boomers grow older, that's only going to get more and more. Um, usually what we see with elders is a prescription drug abuse. You know, they've been yeah, on Yeah, not illegal, but... Right. Well, we do see some of that too, yeah. but mainly right now it's um, prescription drug abuse. You know, right. they might have been on a certain medication since they were in their 30s and the, the they're still taking it and maybe they don't need it, you know, or that they can't read the directions on their, the instructions well, to take the meds. Another thing I was talking to a, a friend of mine, we actually helped take care of my mother, mm -hmm. you know, for several years. And uh, you know when she got really angry at us first time? It's when we took her medicine away from her. Yeah. Because, okay, she, these pills might be for Tuesday. Well, she. She took her pill for Tuesday, but then she thinks when she gets over here, she thinks it's still Tuesday. Right. And so she takes them again. Right. And so we just said, we took her medicine away. Well, I've done that all my life, you know. <laughs> I had the same experience with my mom when she was ill, you know. That was the first thing she got really angry yeah. about. And, it, and really, it's taken part of their independence away. It is. And I'd it probably is. be the same way. But, but, there, but, but for their best interest. You can't let them take medicine over and over. Right, right. Yeah. Now here's a topic that okay. I, I, I wasn't related, I didn't know about either, is the AmeriCorps Senior Connection. Okay. Um, in the Owensboro area, we do have an AmeriCorps program um, that caters to the senior population and with 
that the money we receive from AmeriCorps, we can place a person in senior centers. Um, we've got some in emergency management um, offices, and they, those who are in the senior centers can assist with the home delivered meal program, the congregate program. A lot of them are benefits counselors. Is it like employment? It is. It's kind of like, um, oh, the old Peace Corps. Yeah. Only it's yeah. In America. Or school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they do get a stipend. Um, it's basically working a full time job for a year. Um, but they do get a stipend, a small stipend, um, health insurance, and also they get money to uh, apply towards college. Or we have a lot who are seniors themselves. So I think here recently they decided if they weren't going to use the money for college, then they could designate it for a grandchild, hmm. which I think is very good. Yeah, yes. yeah, I, I wasn't familiar with, with, right. with the, I was familiar with AmeriCorps. Yes. But I didn't know that they had a senior connection. Yes, and uh, I think we're one of maybe the very few in the state. So. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. well that's good. Well, uh, you know, we're about out of time here again, but is there any other thing in wrapping up? You know, the, like I said, it, you can go to our website and uh, the fabulousfishes.net, we've got we actually have this oh, on good. it that they can download mm -hmm. and all of the information there about the conference and we would encourage you to do that especially if there's any interest there and we just we just want you to do that. Uh, Daniel Curry I noticed is going to be mm -hmm. on. He's uh, Daniel's I think he's been on our show here before. Oh good. And uh, and he, he, he's very informative. He is. He is. He knows very the Kentucky passionate. Legal Aid. Yes. yes. He does. Yes. He's out of Bowling Green right? Right. Yeah. Right. yeah he's been on our show here. Yeah. And uh, so that and we're excited about that. Now, is Nikki the one that used to be with AARP, Nikki Henderson? Yes, and uh, before that she was with the Louisville Metro Police. Right, well, she's been at one of our mental health conferences oh, here. Oh, good. She's, she's very, dynamite, too. She is a very good speaker, and yeah. she's going to be at our conference uh, talking about financial exploitation. Yeah. You know. Yeah, she's very, very good. She and, is. And so that would be good. Yeah. And uh, I, there are a lot of good people, a lot of good names that I recognize that oh, I've good. seen. So, you know, we've been glad to have you with us today. Well, thank it's you been for very having. informative. And we want to remind you out there that our website is thefabulousfishes.net. You can find a lot of information there. Go to show information, program information, click it, and you'll get all the information. Now remember, use it or lose it. as well as I used to Can't run as far or as fast Sometimes I think that the old me is becoming exactly that But when I start thinking of all I don't have 